An African Development Bank study states that Nigeria will require $3 trillion in infrastructure spending over the next 30 years. The aviation industry is not without its own infrastructure gap. And interested parties at a recent webinar believe private sector funding may be a way out for the sector. This is also coming at a time that the International Air Transport Association is asking airports and air navigation providers who intend to raise charges to soft pedal as the industry is just on the road to recovery after the devastating effect of the COVID-19 pandemic. All this and more is what is on our menu on aviation this week on Channels Television. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Bukola Jo Oketumbi, and our background report is next. The airline industry is a central part of the commercial aviation value and supply chain. Nevertheless, it has the lowest profit margin and return on investments compared to other sectors in the chain. As the International Air Transport Association meets in Boston, the United States, global airlines agree to step up plans to tackle climate change as they face mounting pressure from regulators and environmental groups over the impact of billions of extra passengers expected to take to the skies in the coming decades. Airlines have recognised that uh, we must, as an industry, align our targets with those of the Paris Agreement and accelerate the plans that we had to improve our environmental performance. But it's not without challenge. Uh, it will require significant investment on the part of airlines. But more importantly, it's going to require everybody working with us. While cutting emissions is critical, airlines are still counting the cost of the COVID-19 crisis, which is piling up an estimated $200 billion of losses between 2020 and 2022, with the projection that industry losses next year may plummet to $11.6 billion in 2022. We're certainly on the path to recovery. Uh, the reopening of the U.S., the announcement that the U.S. would open to European travellers, that, that's been a great boost. You know, we were disappointed earlier in the year that uh, it didn't happen. Uh, it was a very pleasant surprise when it was announced that uh, the U.S. would open for vaccinated uh, travellers in uh, November. Uh, we still forecast losses in the industry in 2022. Uh, but the losses will have significantly reduced to about 12 billion US dollars. While airlines are on the path to recovery, the global airline body is warning that all planned increases in charges by airports and air navigation providers will stall recovery in the air travel and damage international connectivity. IATA is asking airports and navigation service providers to apply solutions like implementing sustainable cost control measures, tapping shareholders, accessing capital markets, seeking government aid. From the United States to Nigeria, where aviation infrastructure funding is an issue, according to the AFDB study, the country will require $3 trillion in infrastructure spending over the next 30 years. But interested parties at this webinar are calling for private capital investment and good corporate governance as factors that may help address the huge aviation infrastructure deficit in the country. If Nigeria is in terms of infrastructure, we are ranking number 23 out of 54 African countries. I'm saying let's even come closer to the continent for us. Let's do better or let's try to match South Africa. Let's try to match Egypt. Let's try to match seashells in terms of this infrastructure and standards. I think we need to make sure there are special instruments to access capital for infrastructure. There are two things that's very key. Air, rail, intermodal connection. He dropped it at the corridor of lack of experts. And I said to myself, many times in Nigeria, aviation proposes but politics discusses. So it depends on the motive of that rail line from Abuja airport to town. So we have a lot of issues about issue of master plan and succession. 
The most common forms of financing peculiar to the Nigerian aviation sector are secured loans and leases which do not come cheap. An airline has an industry margin ranging between 5 to 25 percent, if you can do very well, given the right leadership. But if you are accessing facility, why not support at something beyond your margin? Then it becomes a miracle how you can to remain sustainable. Compared to the rest of the world, me, most of these airlines have access to single digit line of credits, facilities that can enable them to scale the business and keep it running. Evasion is a highly capital intensive business. And if anyone must try and remain sustainable, having the right financing structure in place is very imperative. Effective corporate governance and best management practice, a vibrant liberalized market, socio-economic stability, as well as institutional, legal and regulatory monitoring are also germane if Nigeria's aviation industry will attract more investments that can lead to infrastructure growth. On our interview segment, the former president of the International Civil Aviation Organization Council, Dr. Bernard Ali, is our guest as he spoke extensively at a recent webinar. For him, funding for infrastructure could either be from public or private purses, but ask that businesses take the route of innovation, either in technology or processes, to reduce cost. In terms of private investment in aviation, Nigeria Airways, you can complain Nigeria Airways will not run well. Are the private airlines being run well? If the private sector can be sold and should be more efficient, what is the result? So there is a common denomination, denominator, whether it is public or private. These are cultural issues. Corporate governance is a cultural problem in Nigeria. I try to mention some of those issues you take the case of Nigerian Airways. We had a lot of discussions as to what to do with the carrier. Oh. A lot of analysis. It was saying, okay, liquidate it, get the private sector running, and everything will be perfect. But what has been the result? Yes, private carriers look for funds, they look for profit. Where is the engineering base? Where is the intellectual base? Today, we have a generation gap. I introduced in IKEA um, a program called the No Country Left Behind to get all the states to be at the same level of operation and to support them. And we redirected the resources of IKEA to that. But two years, two, three years before the end of my tenure, I introduced the program on innovation. As a matter of fact, innovation makes it possible for the benefits of aviation to be brought to the advantage of the civil society. It's a new ball game for us. Whether it is in terms of drone technology, I've seen drones used to head elephants, cattle, to do those basic things, to deliver medicine and blood in developing countries. So you cast your mind to what happened with our telecom sector. When I got my first telephone, it cost me significant amount of money. The challenge is it's a new dimension. Most of that are happening outside the normal airport environment, where you have the tower and you have the airport, and we're used to that. Very soon, we'll have to change our thinking a lot of the stakeholders would be town planners because you have UTM, okay? You have operations within the cities. So we have to, and this is common. And in every aspect I have on my desk here, the last ticket that was issued by IATA before the e-ticketing become in this thing, we are talking about airway build that are electronic, everything that can be made to make the operations most more cost efficient. It's easier 
we are speaking to each other now without seeing each other. The same level of innovation is happening. Innovation is opening again a new dimension of opportunities for us. What do we need to do? We need to embrace it. We need to provide a platform to be able to use it. And innovation should not only be in technology, but it should be in processes. It should be in approaches. It should be in our thinking. Regulators should be very open to innovation and make it possible for new entrants to come into the industry. Of course, safely, safety is important, but we should have a listening mode for them, for those new ideas in order to be able to make uh, use of them. So when you're talking about infrastructure, terminal buildings and all this, the issue of the possibility for disabled people, people with impaired mobility, people with special needs, being able to use those facilities is important because once you pour the concrete, you will find it difficult to retrofit. In all the programs we have, we have to factor that in. While innovation will help cost effectiveness in the face of funding deficits, two Nigerian airlines brave the odds to bring in new aircraft that will impact on their operations. Captains in Nigeria's aviation industry, as well as top government officials, accompany the chairman, chief executive officer of Air Peace, Mr. Allen Oyema, to commission and inspect the brand new Embraer 195E2 aircraft at the Namdi Azikwe International Airport, Abuja. This new Umbre 195E2 aircraft is the largest in the E-Jet family with the state-of-the-art facilities designed for passengers' comfort. For sure, this is a, a, an aircraft that's going to bring a lot of uh, fuel savings, uh, passenger comfort, so we are sure that it's a very good aircraft for the company. From the wings and propellers to the cockpit, the Umbre 195E2 has some of the latest inventions in aerospace engineering. This is a new invention. It's the newest in the world, manufactured in 2021. This new arrival brings the number of Embraer 195E2 in the fleet of Air Peace Airline to four, with the hope of hitting 10 by the end of the year. The new aero contractor's Airbus A320 touches down at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja. The aircraft taxis to the tarmac, where the second Airbus is already parked, and it's welcomed to the fleet with water cannons. Top management of aero contractors then proceed for the inspection. With a cabin length of 27.5 meters and 3.7 meters in width, the aircraft has a cockpit furnished with state-of-the-art facilities. The Airbus A320 breathes an irresistible air of comfort for passengers. Addressing a news conference after the inspection, officials of the airline explained the rationale behind the new acquisitions. We are diversifying our business, increasing our capacity and making travel easy for our esteemed customers. It is something of joy to see that um, an airline that was um, the oldest airline in the country is coming up uh, strong and is bringing in capacity. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority pledges to support Aero Contractors' new drive for efficiency. You will give you all the support that the regulatory authority needs to give you so that you can fly safe. The A320 aircraft is in four sizes of A318, 319, 320 and 321. Welcome back to the program. 
Air France KLM takes delivery of its first Airbus A220-300, the company's latest jewel in the fleet on its short and medium haul network. Bahrain's Gulf Air has made its first direct commercial flight to Tel Aviv as the country's flag carrier launched direct flights for the first time with Israel. Gulf Air said that its newest airline would initially operate two flights a week, adding that the line to Tel Aviv comes as part of the political, commercial and civil aviation agreement signed with Israel. Lapid landed at Bahrain's International Airport in an Israeli plane with an olive branch painted on its nose. From Bahrain to China, where commercial airplane makers touted strong post-pandemic prospects for the Chinese aviation market as the country's largest air show closed with an increasing share of the spoils expected to go to domestic manufacturers. Airbus China said on the show sideline that the manufacturer was still in talks with China about certification, which along with support services, was the key to customer confidence in placing orders. We have already started the certification process for this aircraft in China. Our engine manufacturer and us have been working together with the Civil Aviation Authority of China and working closely to obtain a test certificate for this aircraft. I also want to tell you that in numerous communications with many airlines, they have shown strong interest in this aircraft. The normally biennial air show China in the southern city of Zhuhai, delayed by a year because of COVID-19, this allowed Beijing to parade its green aviation prowess. China is a key hunting ground for deals for foreign aviation firms. Honestly, I don't think it had a big impact. I mean, uh, politically, there have been some difficulties over the last uh, few years, uh, but uh, I think generally speaking, business people are very practical and pragmatic, and they try to kind of like uh, make the decisions that make the most sense for them, right? Uh, that being said, uh, as you know, uh, just in the last few days, uh, there's been some uh, positive developments uh, between Canada and China. Uh, and, uh, and I think that that actually certainly uh, uh, allows for a stronger foundation going forward as well. And it makes a more positive atmosphere going forward. And I hope that uh, we can build on those positive developments in order to kind of uh, do even more business uh, in ways that benefit both countries. Air France KLM has unveiled its latest aircraft as the chief executive officer said the company is looking at raising fresh funds just after completing a share issue earlier this year, bolstered by a positive trend in bookings since the United States announced a reopening to Europeans. Good news for us. It was first planned for July, so it took several months longer than expected. But this is really good news. We saw strong demand during the summer on leisure travel in Europe. Our offer was even higher than 2019 for some countries around the Mediterranean, but still we had only 65% of our offer for Q3 and it will be similar for Q4. So it is still complicated for us as it is for other actors in the industry. Okay. The North Atlantic is the most lucrative market for Europe's largest long haul carriers, but business travel, which makes up the lion's share of profits, has been hit hard by the crisis. Air France KLM expects to benefit from pent up demand from large corporate customers and others eager to travel to renew business contact with customers. But it's too early to say how far this will result in a sustained recovery. There are several ways not to get to where our common ambition leads to, and there's a good way to do it. Firstly, to have a level playing field. 
I was just talking about sustainable flying. If we go towards a mandate for multinational companies, and that's just what we need in the long run, with the same rules for everyone, and that we decarbonize very quickly, there's merit and virtue in putting all companies, industries, all actors of the sector on the same footing, and therefore see not what we've seen in the past years with social and fiscal dumping, something which is often detrimental to France. So this is where we will be politically vigilant. The carrier is less exposed than rivals British Airways and Lufthansa to trends in corporate travel because up to half of its premium cabins had been filled with people traveling for leisure even before the pandemic. Air travel is heavily regulated and while it's true that airlines sometimes may not be on top of their game, extreme weather is the most frequent culprit of fly diversions, delays and cancellations. All this happening as part of the aviation game. The weather has a very strong impact you know, on um, the you know um, planes, you know, like that. So if the weather is not good, definitely, I mean, you, if a pilot has to um, keep you know circumventing you know the airspace uh, just to make sure that you know he has a clear you know vision before landing, I think you know safety is the most important thing. Weather can significantly affect aircraft operations. Low cloud, fog, and rain may impede visibility at or around an airport while thunderstorms and lighting can cause serious disruption to flight shadows. Airline also explained that delays and diversions occur during sudden weather changes when the flight is already airborne, because weather could change suddenly without notice. A major example is the low-level wind shear, which is known as very devastating to flights, and could occur suddenly within a few minutes. This is craft are unable to take off or land during a storm and will often be rerouted. Thunderstorms and lightning strikes near airports may also stop ground operations until they pass. Although bad weather, if not well managed, could lead to accidents, but so far pilots in Nigeria say the Nigerian Meteorological Agency has been effective in delivering accurate weather reports. Just recently, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority cautioned all pilots and critical flight parties over severe thunderstorms and other hazardous weather which hampers flight operations now that the raining season has set in. Mainly, the most, most of these activities are more concentrated at the upper north. As uh, ITT is moving that northward or, uh, or uh, southward, you move along with some weather parameters and convective at activity also contain a lot of weather elements, such as heavy rainfall, thunderstorm, wind shear, microbus, fly going to the north. Well, at this period, what we advise is that uh, they should always make sure they collect fly flight documentation from NIMET, submit themselves for briefing, and also add air to the information given to them. Aviation, most probably more than any other mode of transportation, is greatly affected by weather, with every phase of flight having the potential to be impacted. For that reason, commercial aviation in Nigeria must continually deal with these adverse types of weather regularly to ensure safe flight operations. This is our final destination on aviation this week. See you next time, God willing. Ambukola Joe Oketumbi.